Hey guys, it's Kim from Honey Trail Farm. It is an amazing morning this morning. I'm so excited to go outside. We have been in the upper 90s a long time, which is rare for my area. Usually this is like July and August heat and we had June heat and also no rain. So I've been watering my little tail off trying to uh, beat the heat on all my plants. But this morning is like 70. There's a nice breeze. It's gonna be hot, but not as hot. I think it's like upper 80s, which feels like a reprieve from the heat. Um, but I'm excited to get th to the garden, but first I gotta do all my chores. We rotate our cows on pasture and I moved them uh, yesterday or the day before to my favorite pasture, which is the one right beside my house, so I can just look out my window and see them or sit on the porch and see them. Uh, and actually, I can hear the fence snapping. I gotta figure out why that's happening because uh, the ca my cows test fences for sure, so if the fence is not hot, hot, they are getting out. I can hear it. Why is the fence snapping? Don't panic, I'm just walking by you. The calf's still a little wild. It's gotta be grounding out right here. There's a dead bug stuck between. <laughs> I need a stick. I really don't want to have to go all the way down and turn the fence off. I need a wooden. No, I'm trying to fix a fence. Hopefully I don't get shocked. You're about to find out. Get off. How did you do that, bug? Aha. Let's see. Fixed it. No snaps. It's just a bug. False alarm. Well, hi, Miss Peanut. You are so lovely. She's getting very fat. <laughs> she's about a year old now. Um, she's. We're gonna keep her to breed for beef. She's just now a year old. I think she was a spring calf of last year. So <laughs> let's put them in the background. So when honey calves in late September and her cycle returns, I'm gonna guess like November, let's say. I'm gonna breed them both at the same time so we can expect calves at the same time because I just feel like that would be easier. This was her calf she was nursing. While I was milking, I'm pretty sure it was just a nurse calf. Um, because they came together when we bought them. So I'm very excited uh, for Honey's calving this fall. This is my first time, my first cow, my first large animal. Growing up, I only ever had pets, like cats and dogs and a rat one time. Uh, so it will be quite the experience. I'm gonna make sure that I research all that I can, watch all the videos I can, and just prepare. It really helps though that my husband used to work at a dairy uh, farm in the area. And so he knows a little bit, like more than me about some things. So that will help. Let's just pray that there's no complications and everything goes smoothly and also really gonna work on taming the calf so we can actually catch it because it was sexed semen uh, from a Jersey bull which there is still it's still not a hundred percent sure but hopefully we have a heifer calf and I would like to her to be my next milk cow and hopefully her teats are longer <laughs> it's really hard to milk honey the, fr the front ones are fine but you just have to basically strip milk the entire time because her back teats are like literally this long. So, and from what I've heard, they get longer with age. And when we had her AI'd, the guy said she's probably not more than three years old. So hopefully they get longer for the sake of my little hands. In a perfect world, I would have liked to put 
the pigs in the woods and rotate them, but at the time we were just not prepared to do that uh, with all the systems that needed to be put in place. So they're in a stagnant pen, which, like I said, is not ideal, but it works. But they're getting bigger and they keep moving their feed trough around and there's no chance that I'm getting in there with them. They like to bite and I'm never wearing the appropriate clothing. Like I have on sandals, my little toes are, my little piggies are not getting in with them big piggies if you know what I mean. Anyway, so I'm gonna see if I can pick up this old trough that's in the barn uh, and put it in here. Oh yeah, it's not even heavy. Got it. Hopefully they don't move that. I'm back it's a little bit later in the day I was trying to wait till the Sun was completely behind the tree but it's not happening I wanted to show you um, how I make my miracle skin cream so I have been um, infusing grapeseed oil for the past four weeks ish uh, on my windowsill I infused it with calendula Flower and elderflower both are very good for your skin elderflower has actually um, there's been studies that show that it prevents sun damage so we could all use that yes yeah, and okay so I've got uh, grapeseed oil or infused grapeseed oil uh, cocoa butter all of these I bought organically um, coconut oil and the ingredient I forgot that I just remembered is beeswax. That's what makes it a little bit firmer. So these things, oils are gonna melt together. Once it's all melted together, you put it in the fridge for a few hours or freezer if you're impatient like me, until it like solidifies. And then once it's in a solid state, you're gonna blend it in the blender with the liquid ingredients, which is aloe and water and your essential oil. And that's my miracle skin cream. I'm hoping to have some for sale eventually. I'm gonna perfect my recipe and um, maybe put it in an Etsy store at some point in time. I am also in the process of making uh, comfrey salve. Actually, come with me, because I think it's done drying. I put the comfrey that I picked in the last video in, the, in my greenhouse to dry, because it's a nice, hot, dry place. Oh my god, it's so hot in here. Um, my greenhouse is a hot mess for, uh, from one, just the chaos of all of those plant starts that are thousands of plant starts for two it's being taken over by thistles and other weeds i tried to back when it was like 100 degrees the for like two days in a row i tried to shut the doors so that i could cook them to death it didn't work did not work they don't care but i am going to get all my Comfrey out. There's, there's crap everywhere. Does anybody else ignore things to try to get them to go away? I do.
Okay, now that I'm back, I've got my comfrey. It almost blew away in the wind. All you have to do is take a mason jar. I like the wide mouth because it's easier to stick my hand in there. A few dried comfrey leaves. The only thing that you need to make sure of is that they are 100% dry when you put them in. In the jar so they don't collect moisture. Now I'm actually gonna go inside and grab another jar because I don't like to pack it too tightly in here. Um, so that the oil can like collect around the whole thing and it not just all be leaves. So I'm gonna go grab another jar. It's all gone in this and each jars. Mm-hmm. What's in there? Um thistles. Uh it's comfrey. Yeah. But comfrey. it's kind of pokey like a thistle, isn't it? Yeah. So comfrey is very good for your skin. Yeah. Now I've just got grapeseed oil. And look at these. There's country. And all you have to do is cover. It up so that you can suck it in. Right? That's it right. The leaves release their properties into the oil and then the yep. oil sucks so they can drink out of it. Right? Drink um Drink it. Just so it makes really good oil for your skin. Yeah. So we can heal boo-boos and Ouchies and bug bites. Yeah, and bee bites. And bee bites. And stings. Yeah, and stings. So now that you've got your comfrey covered with oil, all you have to do is put a lid on it, sit it in like a sunny windowsill, and um, leave it to sit for about four weeks and it will infuse the oil with the benefits of whatever herbs inside. This time it's comfrey. All you have to do to turn it into a salve, which is basically the same, it's just thicker so it's easier to handle, is to melt some beeswax in it and then pour it into your jar of choice and you've got comfrey salve, your skin healing oil, all for yourself. This will work on all kinds of things, sprains, uh, scratches, bug bites, stings, achy joints, achy muscles, broken bones, all kinds of things. Oh! Very windy. Hold on. Let's tell them why. It works for a scratch. It works for scratches? Yeah, like cat super mini scratches. Or Hunter has dry patches of skin. I don't think it's quite eczema, but usually in the winter time he'll get like little round dry patches. And I put this on there, either this or my calendula lotion, and it works wonders. Heals it right up, doesn't it? Yeah. Elephorns. And everything and it's good for your skin. Yeah, and thorns. And thorns. Yeah. Okay. And we're gonna have to pull out with the tweezers. Yeah. So let's say thanks for watching. Click the like button, subscribe. Click the like button. Somebody's watched too many kids YouTube videos, huh? Yep. So you learned that. <laughs> Alright, thank you guys for watching. Until next time. <laughs>